Hi folks, quick video here to show you how to do a service on a Sprintex treadmill. This is a little bit different from your regular treadmill because it's almost frictionless. It's got these rubber slats that run on bearings that you can't see but are under there, which uh, makes for a very nice machine. It's almost frictionless and there is very nice control and it goes forwards and it goes backwards. So there's two modes of operation that you need to check when you're doing your functionality checks. They've also got an incline, just as you would expect, and they go slow and they go fast. So everything check-wise is the same as a normal treadmill, except you've got the extra functionality. Um, in terms of checking the belt itself, you need to make sure that the rubber slats are not lifting. This is a fairly new machine, so these are all in good condition. But if you do get the rubber slats lifting, uh, there's not a lot you can do about that, and it might indicate that the belt uh, could need changing, so inspect all of the slats. Uh, in terms of testing the machine itself, you would do a pat test as usual on the cable. Uh, you could also do a motor current test using the treadmill saver and your clamp meter in just the same way as you would any other treadmill and the information would be relevant to this one as with any other treadmill. Uh, in terms of doing the service itself and cleaning inside, first of all, power off, of course. That's the on-off button there. Uh, and you can also need to make sure that the emergency stop buttons are uh, working and when you press them they click in. So if you're trying to restart the machine, always make sure that these are twisted and pulled out, otherwise the machine will not start. Okay, so in terms of inside the machine we've got an optical speed sensor just there. You can see the disc and the speed sensor that wants cleaning. Check the wiring that come into the filter, this is where the power comes in. Check the wires are in good condition and we've not got loose connections and burning. Moving across, we've got our circuit board that controls various things. That needs dusting off and cleaning. We've got fuses in there, you can just see. And we've got control signals that go to the inverter for the drive motor. I'll show you the inverter later. This is a big transformer that's not serviceable, but you can check the wires nevertheless and make sure that it's clean and tidy and we've not got dust buildup. We've got another circuit board. This is a control circuit board with fuses again, and that connects to the uh, touch screen that you saw. We've got the incline mechanism there, so a little bit of grease on the screw thread. And we've got a little gap here. This is so that you can see into the belt. And you need to check these rubber bands which are on the edge of the belt and look for horizontal cracks, cracks running that way, which will indicate the belt is starting to fail. Um, also, get a little bit of assembly grease, such as this, and a little bit of a wipe on the top surface there, which keeps the belt supple. Be careful of your fingers, and also note that you may not be able to move the belt forwards and backwards by hand. You need to switch the machine on and get it running at a slow speed to get it to do that. Uh, so be very, very careful if you're going to apply the lube whilst the belt's running because you've got electrical hazards and you've got finger trap hazards. You've got roller bearings here that need a little bit of grease, just uh, grease, sorry. You need a little bit of uh, lube such as Brunox just to rejuvenate the grease. Uh, and you've got a bearing in each corner, so there's four of those to do. And then we'll move around the other side and you can see what's around the other side. We've got a drive belt here, as you might expect. You can check that in the same way and add some BD90 if necessary, or tension it. We've got a tensioning mechanism here, which you can adjust in much the same way as you would any other machine. You've got an inverter as we come across. This is what controls the AC motor. So this has got control signals to that other circuit board we saw on the other side a moment ago. And we've got a big fan on the back to keep it cool. So again, make sure your fan is clean. Nice uh, brush in there, vacuum up the dust. Moving across, we've got our incline motor. That's this mechanism here. There's the motor, there's the gearbox. This is a timing belt. And you need to just inspect the timing belt and you've got another screw thread here, a little bit of grease on there. And you've got another access panel here where you can see the band on the other side of the belt, which is just there. So again, check that for cracks and put a little bit of grease just on the surface. You don't want too much, just a light wipe, and wipe off any excess just to keep that nice and supple. And that's about it. In terms of your feedback, you need to make sure your feedback is very, very uh, concise and uh, uh, accurate. We need information like your pat test results. We need motor current test. You can do a stomp test just as you would any other machine. We need to know the results of that. You can do a shuffle test if you wish and record that information. Uh, 
The serial number on this particular machine is at the back here, so make sure you record all of that here. And make sure that you do a proper handover with the customer, so make sure that you're familiar with how the touchscreen works and that uh, you're not embarrassed by uh, uh, trying to figure it out whilst the customer's stood by the side of you. And uh, one final thing, just to note, these side covers, I've already taken those off for you, but they've got these rather cheap, nasty fixings. You, if you're lucky, you'll be able to get them out with a uh, Phillips number two screwdriver just by unscrewing the heads, but because they're cheap and nasty, quite often you can't. So you might need a pair of pliers to get that out. Be careful not to break these, because if you do, chances are you may not have any spares, and of course you're only gonna have enough as to what was on the machine in the first place. So look after these. And that's it. Best of luck. Any problems, give me a call.